Stephen, you did. You went down uh, on uh, where into Dallas, right? Like the day after the riot, you went in the the morning. It, it appeared to be, uh, and you talked to a graffiti artist, and I, I, I wanted to have you on, Stephen, because I I don't know, I don't know how we have conversations when the conversations we're having with people don't make sense uh, to one side or the other. The things that he was saying to you, I, I, I don't know how to even logically yeah. address those things. Can you explain well, you, what happened and, and what your thoughts are? Well, no, I can't logically explain what happened. So spoiler alert, I don't want anyone <laughs> to be disappointed, but yeah, you know, you say you went, you tell me that I went down the day after the riot, which one, you know? So we went down one day yeah. after a day of rioting. We went to deep Ellum. right? you know, hipster neighborhood where um, everything was either kicked in or boarded up. And like when I did this with Detroit, I thought it was important because people see the riots going on at night and you see the police and you see the barricades and, you know, maybe some of them get uh, run over with a panzer or something and the AOC uh, tweets it out. But um, a lot of people don't know what the remnants look like. And so it was many, 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 many blocks all boarded up and they're boarded up because the windows are gone. So the plan was just to walk through and show people what this is, you know, what this has been like. And you see uh, walls and fences with nails, you know, makeshift glass put on top of it. So people are obviously concerned in protecting their neighborhood. So that's how it started. And then there was, um, yeah, a vandal doing a mural on a wall of a business. Uh, Justice for DeSoto got the name wrong. It's Desto. So obviously not too up to date on what actually happened with that story. And um, it was, I don't know if I can describe, he happened to be when we called the police, it was a very awkward scenario. My producer was like, yeah, there's a guy here who's uh, writing on a building and getting hostile. And I said, can you describe him to us? He goes, well, he's maybe about 5'10", uh, dark hair. I said, what clothes is he wearing? He said, he's not wearing clothes. Uh, and then the officer said, black, white. He's like, um. <sighs> I don't know. Why does that matter, Mr. Policeman? <laughs> you, you know? <laughs> so it was very uncomfortable. This guy was vandalizing this property. And uh, I initially just started asking, I said, hey, that's beautiful. I, I thought initially he had permission to because it was, you know, kind of a mural. And then in speaking mm -hmm. to him, I realized how shifty he was. He probably didn't have permission. And he said that, uh, you know, all of these white people in your penthouses were sparing you. We're sparing you because you take our lives. And he kept saying, you people, you, meaning white people. And I said, hold on a second. Well, let's, let's, let's cut that out. That's pretty racist. And um, then he started getting in my face and he insulted me for, and I've, here's the thing, Glenn, and I, I've talked about this on air a lot. Whenever I wear a blue shirt and my glasses, black guys, usually friendly, they call me Clark Kent. So I had a cab driver in Houston. He goes, ah, I look like Clark Kent. Now I get it. Big white guys with, you know, the traditional haircut and glasses look like yeah, Clark Kent. Yeah, yeah. Fine. But this guy used it as an insult. And I was like, oh, oh, oh Superman, please stop. So he was telling me that I looked, <laughs> <laughs> looked like Clark Kent coming in here. So Yeah, he I haven't upset. taken my shirt off yet, Mr. Mr. Artist, <laughs> wait until <laughs> right, I do. <laughs> right. I should have brought in Dean Kane. I bet you he would do it. It's like, no, this is yeah. Clark Kent. <laughs> um, so he got upset. He got unruly and, you know, tried to get in my face a little bit. And obviously, I, th I think a lot of these people, as you know, are, are, are sort of cowardly because then I said, hey, listen, we can talk, but don't get in my face. He stood back. Then another gentleman, a, a white gentleman who looks like he walked out of a, you know, uh, like Hobbit uh, World of Warcraft character, short, bald beard. <laughs> came out and said, hey, I'm a part of the Deep Ellum Community Association, something or other. Not an elected governing body, Glenn. We did some research. Mm -hmm. It's just a bunch of hipsters who say that they have authority. And he said, well, I've, so we've given this man permission to do this on this building. I said, well, okay, mm. who's the business owner? So, uh, well, I, we're the city, community, the county, uh, he has the right. I said, well, who's the business owner? But I don't know. Well, it turns out the business owner actually didn't give permission. This guy has done it three times before, and it's been uh, whitewashed over. So um, it's not art. Wow. It is vandalism. And the part that you guys don't know is the very next morning at sunrise, I was planning to go down as Bob Ross and paint over it. Uh, but unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, my team said it was dangerous. And they said, well, the optics would look bad if you're painting over a black man's mural with white paint. I was like, we're just restoring it to the color that it was white. The wall was white. I'm just you, not a racial you message, could, so. <laughs> You could have put little, uh, like a little friendly bird over here or another fr friendly tree. It was a, it was a birch. It was white. Let's see. Sorry. This little, this little vandal here. Let's give him some more. Let's give him oh, some more. Oh, Stephen, I don't know who talked to you out of that, but you have to go and do that.
I have to see I, you as Bob Ross painting over Vandalism. I want, but, you know, they were afraid of the optics. I don't, I, I'm not, it's vandalism. And here's the thing, the business owner has done it several times. He just doesn't have the time to do it every day. And I know some people will say, well, it's just plywood. Well, the reason the plywood is up is because windows have been kicked in. The walls are also vandalized. And if I run a business, I don't want a political message on my business. That's my right. I don't understand why this is hard. They then tried to post my address, which they were unable to do. They talked, they compared me to a Nazi. These people went on social media. I'm a Nazi for saying, hey, you have the right to protest. You don't have the right to destroy somebody else's stuff. And you know what? Here's the thing. Yeah, people are being dragged out and beaten in the street. Yeah, officers are being shot, including black people. And it's absolutely terrible. I was broken up about David Dorn yesterday. I cried into my wife's arms like a baby. You know why? Because I said, it's not a movie. And evil won over good today. That was a good man who was shot dead for a television. All of that bothers me. But let's reduce that. Let's reduce that to a less extreme example. Someone destroying your property is forfeiting their rights to security. The ideal scenario is not that you shoot him, but I am tired of Americans cowering and saying, well, you know what? We should just let him do it. It's only stuff. Because you don't know if it's only stuff. How many times have we seen people take stuff and shoot people on the way out? Or how many times have we seen people come in and say, hey, we're just taking your stuff. And then they want to make sure there are no witnesses. By the way, George Floyd did that, stuck his gun into a pregnant lady's belly while five of his friends committed strong-armed robbery and did five years in prison, not saying he deserved to die at the hands of the police officer. Can't those things both be true? George Floyd should not be your emblem. He was a criminal, and he didn't turn his life around. He still had hardcore drugs, multiple drugs in his system, and the police officer was can I? Can I was a D word for doing what he did. All of these things are true. None of it excuses people acting like uh, animalistic thugs, black, white, yellow, by the way. That includes white guys who shoot black cops. Don't make it a racial thing. And if you want to make me feel guilty, I don't care. I don't care.